chapter 1, but we're mainly looking at chapter 4. We've been looking at 1 Peter on Sunday nights, and uh, some of you don't come Sunday night, and you've really been missing a blessing, so I thought, well, I'll preach 1 Peter uh, this morning. The other thing that motivated me is 1 Peter is a lot about suffering, and I'll be honest with you, it's hard to preach about suffering very many times in a row. <laughs> So tonight I'm, I'm preaching about praising the Lord, <laughs> All right. and uh, we're just going to have our, our message from 1 Peter this morning, and it'll be a blessing. The, the theme this morning is live for the glory of God. It, there, there's some rich and very important topics that, that come up in the book of 1 Peter. In uh, 1 Peter 1 verse 3, that's where I want to start, he talks about the fact that as Christians we have a living hope. Let me read that. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because of Jesus, because of the resurrection, we have a, a lively, that means a living hope. Don't forget that. Uh, you don't have to find hope. If you're saved, you have hope in Jesus Christ. And uh, we've seen in this book uh, God's call for us to make Jesus Lord of our life. Uh, that's... Uh, that's just uh, the standard for us as Christians. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Look at those, that phrase there. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. I love that phrase. Uh, God needs to have that special place in our heart that nobody else has. He needs to be the Lord of our life. And uh, in 1 Peter chapter 4, we saw that we need to have the mind of Christ. Uh, for as, uh, 1 Peter 4, 1. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh... Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Now, we need to have the mind of Christ and uh, have Christ's attitude toward life. Uh, life is just so constant, isn't it? Man, it just keeps coming at you. Uh, I had to say, I've, I've said to my wife as we were singing that second verse of that last song, I, I'm not sure what that, that verse means. <laughs> uh, life doesn't get better as you get older. But when you get to heaven, it'll, it'll, it'll be a lot better. Uh, we're going to suffer. And uh, we saw last week on Sunday night, suffering uh, purifies the saint. It identifies us with Christ. Uh, it reminds us life is short. Uh, listen, we don't have forever on this earth. Praise God for that. <laughs> you know, uh, we can look forward to heaven. And uh, suffering not only purifies us as Christians, it unifies us as believers. Listen, if... If and when suffering comes, a real persecution for Christians, uh, it'll, it'll separate the, the saints from the ain'ts. Uh, people who don't know the Lord, they'll be gone. Even in Peter and John's days, they said they went out from us because they were not of us. If they'd been of, of us, they'd no doubt have continued with us. And uh, it, uh, it unifies the church. Well, today we're looking at the third thing that I didn't, wasn't able to get to on Sunday night, um, Suffering glorif glorifies the Lord. And it's also that, that one of the big topics of, uh, of Peter. Uh, we need to live for the glory of God. So three main things that, that we've been looking at. Uh, Jesus needs to be Lord of our life. Uh, we need to have Christ's attitude toward life. And we need to live uh, for the glory of God. That's, that's our call. We're going to read in chapter 4, starting in verse 12. Let me read on down through verse 16. 1 Peter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. We'll stop reading there and, and we'll, we'll get to the rest in just a minute. Now, suffering can bring glory to God. God can use it in, in our lives. And one of the things he points out there in verse 12 is we should expect suffering. It, it shouldn't surprise us when it comes. 
Listen, just on a practical level, we live in a sin-cursed world. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised when the cursed world we live in affects us. Uh, Job said in Job 5, Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. It's going to happen, folks. <laughs> and to different extents, to different peoples. Uh, some, somehow we think trials and troubles are only going to come to others. Oh, that, that'll never happen to me. Well, sometimes we'll just suffer. Sometimes we'll suffer because we're Christians. Sometimes we'll suffer for other reasons. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, I had a funny thing happen some years ago now. I actually got several phone calls from two different families on the same day. Both of the families in our church were going through difficult times. And both of them pointed out to me that if they had the trouble that that other family had, they'd be fine. And it was so odd. I mean, they didn't know that I was getting phone calls from both of them. They both pointed out, you know, their trouble. Oh, that's no worry. Wish we had that trouble. Oh, their trouble. No problem there. Wish we had that trouble. Listen, you don't get other people's troubles. You get your own. <laughs> God tailor makes them to you. <laughs> it just happens that way sometimes. And the Bible gives us real hope. We have hope in the resurrection. This is not all there is, folks. There's a verse you either need to know or know where it is. It's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13 is, is a, should be a real encouragement to you. If you don't know it by heart, then at least know where to find it. God says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You see, he says, the temptation, the trouble that you go through, it's common to man. You're not the only one going through trouble. You're not even the only one going through this, the same trouble you're going through. It's common to man. But the key there is God is faithful. See, our circumstances aren't faithful. <laughs> That's not where our trust is. God is faithful. And he won't suffer or allow you. you know, sometimes people, I had one Bible college student read that and said, he thought the word suffer there meant suffer, you know. It, it means allow. God will not allow you to be tempted above that you're able. That's God's promise. You, you might think, oh, uh, Lord, the Lord doesn't know. The Lord does know. With the temptation, he'll make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. I thought it was interesting, the verses that bracket. Uh, verse 12, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. He's basically saying, don't trust yourself. But then look at the verse behind it, verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. <laughs> don't, don't trust anyone other than God either. Uh, we need to trust the Lord. God is faithful. Uh, live for the glory of God. We should expect suffering. Now, don't go out of your way for it. <laughs> you know, don't, uh, uh, don't go looking for suffering. But just understand, uh, we live in a sin-cursed world, and, and God has said, Yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Some of you may have been uh, like the Apostle Paul, where before you got saved, oh, uh, you gave Christians a hard time. Had a had a friend in Bible college who, his testimony was he, he used to love to persecute Christians. And boy, he'd, you know, he had curly questions and all kinds of stuff. And finally, somebody just asked him, well, Dave, what do you believe? Oh, and that stumped him. <laughs> he had to stop and think. And, and then he, be, he became a Christian. And uh, yeah, God got even with him. No, not really. Uh, we need to expect that these things will happen. He just uses the phrase, think it not strange. Don't think it's strange when, when trouble comes, especially for, for Christians. But then, I find this uh, uh, difficult. Verse 13, he says, not only expect suffering, rejoice in suffering. Now, this is something you can, you'll be working with uh, and on your whole life. <laughs> uh, he says, rejoice, and here's the reason, inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. And here's the result, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. And there's coming a day when you're going to see how all this makes sense. And we need to understand, if we walk with the Lord, that's a blessing. You know, if, if people are giving us a hard time because we're walking with Jesus. Hey, be proud to suffer for, for Jesus' sake. Um, you know, suffering 
It'll purify us as Christians. It'll unify us as, as a church, but it glorifies God, and that's the key. There's a lot of things you can look at uh, why we can rejoice in suffering. Uh, one is that it makes us anxious for Christ's coming. You know, when suffering comes, it, it changes our attitude. We get a little less attached to this world and look a little bit more forward to the, to the glory of God, uh, to what God is doing. When his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. He says that a lot of different ways. In 2 Timothy 1.12, he says, I know whom I have believed, we, we sang that this morning, and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. There, there's coming that day when Jesus will say, come up, and uh, we'll be with him for eternity. It prepares us, makes us anxious uh, for eternity. <laughs> Almost, almost the last verse of the Bible says, even so come, Lord Jesus. And really, that, that should be our attitude. This world is not our home. As well, like, like we've said, suffering ties us to Christ. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a blessing. Verse 1 of chapter 4, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. And in verse uh, 13, as we read, Rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. It, it ties us to the Lord. Earlier in chapter 2, verse 21, he says it very specifically. For even, he's been talking about suffering. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. That's our example. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, who we are in Christ. You know, I was thinking, what do you mean when you say, I want to be like Jesus? <laughs> yeah, I think we have some vague idea in mind. But let me tell you, Christ suffered. You want to be like Jesus? Do you really want to be like Jesus? Uh, we sing the song, draw me nearer, 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 Precious Lord, to thy, I think it's precious, bleeding side. Do you really want to be like Jesus? Uh, suffering ties us, ties us to Christ. But you know, suffering also increases, in a sense, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in us. Maybe I'm saying that wrong. I, I don't think the, uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit changes, but we draw closer to the Lord as we go through difficult times. You know, we'll, uh, we'll look to him. I, I hope you look to him uh, for answers. In, in verse 14 of chapter 4, If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. It's during those times of suffering that you, you, you remember more than others, the Lord is with me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I, I hope that's true. In uh, chapter 1 and, and, and verse 8, he said, Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I think that epitomizes what we're talking about here. We just, we rejoice in him. For some reason, this poem stuck in my mind. I walked a, I walked a mile with pleasure. He chattered all the way and left me none the wiser for all he had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow. Not a word, said he. But oh, the things I learned when sorrow walked with me. God uses our suffering. God uses our suffering to draw us closer to him. Don't, don't resent it. Trust the Lord. And you know, suffering keeps us real. <laughs> we, we can get a bit unreal, can't we, about life. We, we are not citizens of earth, we're citizens of heaven. And sometimes we forget that. We get pretty attached to things here. Uh, suffering keeps us real. We, we sang the song this morning, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up at Westpac. No, somewhere beyond the blue. Uh, we need to be careful, don't we? We need to be real about eternity. Listen, eternity is, is much bigger than now. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad, you, you know, I love 
Fellowship Baptist Church. But folks, heaven is better than this. The singing will be even be better. Believe that. Or, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, you know, everything will be better. What a blessing it'll be. Suffering keeps us keeps us real. And you know, suffering can prepare us to serve. Uh, there in, in verse 2 of 1 Peter 4, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Uh, that's what God is doing. And, you know, person after person has experienced this. M many of you have. Some of you have heard of a, a lady named Johnny Erickson. As a teenager, uh, she dived in, into some water and was paralyzed. And you think, oh, that's, that's the end of her. No, it's just the beginning of well, over 50 years of ministry now. Been a blessing to many, many people uh, through her Christian testimony, even singing and all, all kinds of things. Uh, my brother uh, lost his precious wife. We really loved her. What a uh, sweet soul she was. Got cancer and struggled with it for some years and, and, and died. And he found that uh, many people didn't know what to say to him and what to do uh, at her death. And, and it caused him to have a ministry to others in their grief. You know, God, God used that to prepare him to serve. Uh, some of you have heard of a man named Richard Weinbrandt. He became a prisoner. I, I think he wrote a book, I Was a Slave. And it was a, a terrible time for him of persecution, beatings, all kinds of things in, in the prisons in uh, Eastern Europe there. And, but God gave him a ministry to the other men. And he said after many years, I think it was 14 years later he was released, he said he felt like he was losing his ministry. <laughs> you know, God had, had used him in, in that situation. Uh, there was a song some years ago, I, I've never heard anybody else sing it. Um, one by one he took them from me, all the things I valued most, until I was empty-handed, all my glittering toys were lost. Then at last I comprehended with my stupid mind and dull that God cannot pour his riches into hands already full. God can't pour his riches into hands already full. And sometimes we're, we're so tied to the things of earth and, and we're so full of all the things that we have to do that we have no time for the Lord. And we need to understand that sometimes suffering is just to keep us real, kind of keep us understanding that we're people of eternity. Now, we live today, and we need to use today. We're, we're people of, of the day and not of the night and so on. But, uh, you know, God is good. God is always good. God is always at work in us. And we need to be careful that we mean it when we say, Oh, Lord, whatever it takes to draw closer to you. Uh, you know, I hear some of those songs so casually sung sometimes, and I think, I hope you mean that. Uh, we, we can expect suffering. Uh, and we can see the glory of God in suffering. We can rejoice. But as well, suffering should also cause us to examine our lives. I find a lot of times when suffering comes, people examine God's character. <laughs> Why would God allow this to happen to me? And they don't stop and think, the one they need to examine is themselves. You can count on the Lord. But what about me? When I'm going through suffering, uh, let, let's read again in chapter 4, starting again in verse 15. He gives us the positive and the negative. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Now, oftentimes when trouble comes, we do ask the question, why? Don't, don't put it to God, you know, why would you do this? What we need to stop and think is, why is it happening to me? What is, what is God doing here? Now, he, he talks about, sometimes it happens because we're criminals. Listen, if you're speeding down the road at 120 k's an hour, don't be surprised if you get chucked in prison. You're not suffering for Jesus. You broke the law, <laughs> all right? If you, law, if you lie or cheat or, you know, whatever, uh, God says, that's, be ashamed of that. That's, that's okay. Um, God says, that's not the way we should suffer. You know, cr criminals often say, oh, I had no other choice. You know, I had to kill her. 
<laughs> we always can do right. As Christians, we can always do right. The problem is we look at the consequences. Don't look at the consequences. Look at the character. Do right. So do right even if it makes the stars fall. <laughs> Listen, if the whole universe is going to explode, if you do right, you do right. God's in charge of the universe, not you. Uh, some people who get saved have previously committed crimes. And they confess it. And they turn themselves in. And they suffer the consequences. Exactly right. Uh, it's not right for us as Christians to, to suffer as, as criminals. Sometimes we suffer, now let's be honest, just because we're kind of stupid. <laughs> we had a friend, it's been a long time ago, he was a, he was a character as a kid, he's a godly man now, but uh, he was one of eight, he was, I think, I was counting up this morning, I think he was the fourth, and always getting in trouble as a kid. And one day he'd, he was looking through the crack of a door, you know how the hinge is there, and there's a, there's a crack, and he thought, I'm going to scare my sister. And he put his nose in the crack of the hinge of the door. And when she came along, he yelled at her, and she smacked the door and broke his nose. <laughs> and caught his nose right in the hinge of that door. Well, listen, that's not suffering for Jesus. That's suffering because you're just stupid. <laughs> all right? Just a dumb thing to do. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things in life like that. I could, I could give you plenty of illustrations from my own life, uh, maybe from yours. We won't take any testimonies. Uh, but... Uh, we need to understand, the suffering will come because of our own sinfulness, and we need to stop and examine, you know, why is this happening? Is it because I'm a criminal? Is it because I'm being foolish? Uh, or is it because I'm following the Lord? And, uh, you, you know, as a Christian, uh, there's going to be times when just doing what's right will cause us to, it could even cause us to end up in prison. The, the example that comes quite naturally is the early Christians, as they would preach the the word of the Lord, uh, I'm looking at Acts chapter 4, verse 18, uh, the, the disciples have been preaching, and it says, they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. <laughs> That's pretty easy. For we cannot but speak the things which we've seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. You see, they knew that serving Jesus, doing what Jesus has said, was the right thing. Even if it meant going to prison. And as you know, almost all, all of the disciples save one were put to death for, for serving Jesus. Uh, we need to understand, uh, it, it's all right to suffer as a Christian. Now, that doesn't mean that as Christians we, need, we have the right to be obnoxious or uh, things like that. But we do need to serve the Lord. Listen, if going to church were a crime, would you go to church? I would. That might change how, how I got there. Uh, if witnessing were a crime, would you witness? I would. Listen, God might give, like Paul, give you a jail ministry. But that's Okay. It's not a shame to suffer for the Lord. You've got to be careful there that you're not doing it for selfishness and self-will, that you're actually doing it for the Lord and you're doing it for the right reason because our heart can be quite deceitful. But we need to not be ashamed of serving the Lord. Verse 16, he puts it very, very clearly. If any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Let him glorify God on this behalf. It's all right. If your neighbors won't talk to you because they know you're a Christian, that's all right. You can still talk to them. <laughs> Life is really interesting as a Christian. You never know what God is going to do next. We don't need to be ashamed of Christ. That's what, what Paul said in Romans chapter 1. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Uh, we don't need to be ashamed of living for Christ. God has called us, uh, us to serve him. That passage that I, I read you there in, in Acts, uh, later on in chapter 5, verse 41, it says, They departed from the present council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And here's what they kept doing. Daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Uh, they, didn't even, they didn't even move it back. You know? Every day, they just kept doing what God had told them to do. Uh, we need to, to be careful. We need to examine our lives. If we're suffering because of our sin, well, confess it and forsake it. 
But if we're suffering for, uh, for living for the Lord, that's okay. Uh, make sure that you're, you're not ashamed of the Lord. Um, the, the third thing in verses 17 and 18 there, uh, we need to examine our lives. Are, are we seeking to win the loss? Verse 17, he says, The time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the, the sinner appear? Uh, what he's saying there is, is that you know, if we're struggling, what's it going to be like for these lost folks when they have to stand before God? Man, it's going to be much worse. Uh, Peter's description of the lost is at the end of those verses. He says, them that obey not the gospel of God in verse 17, and the ungodly and the sinner. Listen, that was all of us before Christ. And uh, in our trials, we're going to have opportunities with the lost. Uh, we have a friend who has cancer and for some years has been getting treated, and, and the Lord has, has kept him alive, former pastor. And, uh, when you're getting cancer treatment, there's a lot of times when you're sitting places, waiting. Well, he's a talkative fellow, and you know, people tend to start talking when they're sitting and waiting. He's had many opportunities to witness for the Lord. You know, I mean, these are people facing death, and uh, they need to hear. And he, he has the answers from, from the Lord. But you know, not only do we get opportunities in our suffering, uh, like Wimbrandt in jail and... Uh, you know, Johnny Erickson with, with handicapped people, people in wheelchairs and, and so on. And not only do we get opportunities, we have a testimony. I can guarantee you, your friends and family are watching how you'll respond to trouble. And if they'll see you respond by rejoicing, by trusting the Lord, man, that'll, that'll speak volumes to them. We need to be careful that we uh, are, are seeking to win the lost uh, by our testimony and by our words. Uh, God is saying here, if life is difficult for a Christian, how much worse will it be for the lost? Uh, our fiery trial, you know, he uses that expression, that's nothing compared to, compared to their flaming fire. In Thessalonians, he talks about how God is going to take vengeance on them in flaming fire. It's going to be much worse for them. People need our testimony. People need our testimony of faith. Let me ask you, what's your testimony in suffering? Uh, we need to be trusting the Lord. And, and the point, it, it all comes down to this, live for the glory of God. You know, whether life is good or whether life is hard, live for the glory of God. Uh, we should expect trials. We should rejoice in trials. Man, that's hard. Uh, when, you, when you learn all, all how to do that, you tell me. Uh, it, it's a hard thing. Let suffering cause you to examine your life and draw closer to the Lord. Don't be ashamed in your trials. Witness in your trials. And then the last verse, commit yourself to God. Look at verse 19. We haven't read it yet, I don't think. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. Really, that's what life comes down to, doesn't it? We need to commit ourselves to the Lord. Uh, are you suffering because you're doing the will of God? He says, don't be ashamed. Glory. Or are you just suffering? <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just just the way life is. Well, no matter what, trust your soul to Him. Listen, it's all about eternity, isn't it? Keep doing right. Just keep doing right. And know that God will always do right. We don't have to worry about God. <laughs> we don't have to worry about Him. He's a faithful Creator. Know that God is always faithful. Uh, again, a, a, a song, a, a poem originally. Some of you know this. God hath not promised sky is always blue. Flower-strewn pathways all our lives through. God hath not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. God hath not promised smooth, smooth roads and wide, swift, easy travel, needing no guide. Never a mountain, rocky and steep, never a river, turbid and deep. But God has promised strength for the day, rest for the labor, light for the way, grace for the trials, Help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love. Don't look for the things God hasn't promised. Trust God for what he has promised. God has given us the promise as Christians he'll never leave us or forsake us. He's given us the promise that all these things can work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Promise after promise, and God will keep his word. Uh, we can trust him. He's a, 
He's a faithful creator. Let me encourage you to commit yourself to God. Trust your soul to Him, your eternity. Uh, keep doing right. Uh, commit yourself uh, to God and live for His glory. And you know, it starts with salvation. Trusting the Lord starts with salvation. A person has to realize they're a sinner and deserve to go to hell. God said all have sinned. He says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What a blessing. Uh, we're separated from God by our sin, but Christ bridges the gap. Uh, I would encourage you this morning, if you're not sure, trust Christ as your Savior. Trust Christ as your Savior. Uh, are you saved? I think that's a good way to ask people. Uh, we were talking about it the other day. You know, if you ask people, are you a Christian? That, that can mean anything. Ask them if they're saved. If they don't know what it means, they're probably not. <laughs> uh, if they do know what it means, uh, it, it'll, it'll startle them. You can put it even, even cl more clearly. If you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? If you stood before God and He asked, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? Listen, the Bible says it's not by works of righteousness which we've done. No one can be good enough to go to heaven. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. I come in the merits of Jesus. Uh, that's the only way. He's the only way to heaven. If you are saved, are you living by faith? Can you say with Paul, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day? I hope so. Uh, this morning, we're going to end with the song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. It's page 10 in, in your hymnal there. Uh, let's go ahead and turn there. Azrael, you come and, and lead us in that. Page 10. And uh, as we stand and as we, uh, as we sing, uh, I don't know, there might be someone here today who's, who's not saved. You've never trusted Christ. I'll be down here at the front. Just, just come. Let, let us 